Welcome to the Plato Lounge, where we just chill. Gods walk free, all because you disrupted my ritual. <laughs> Damn, so lost. It's always someone else's fault, isn't it? But I gotta say, I love this environment. Like, this looks dope. Like, the foreground, the midground, the background, like, this is excellent. You are on your knees. <laughs> Look at those tentacles. I imagine this is Gilanane. I hope I pronounced her name right. I'll just call her Gil for short. But yeah, because then as you scroll up, you can see the hands right here. But damn, she looks creepy. I wonder if you could romance her. You know, there might be some people into that. Fearful. Not rest until you are on your knees. The only thing is, where is her color? Weird. Fearful. Like she's a moving Cowering. statue. Helpless. Ever since Inquisition, I've been worried that Dragon Age is going to completely move away from like dark, creepy crap like this, but hey, it's back. However, I have no clue what's going on here. I don't know, maybe he's being transformed into a brood father. Cowering. Whoa, that looks kind of weird, doesn't it? I imagine this is snow, but like at first glance, I was like, man, why is this so gray? Quit. This is something I was worried about. Like I was hoping from the previous trailer that that was mainly alpha footage, but looking at this, my issue is what do all of these things have in common? Do, 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 do. <laughs> all of the windows are exactly the same. Like it has the same light emitting out of every single window. For me, when I see this, I don't see a city that people live in. I just see some empty buildings that are background filler. It's like as much flack as Dragon Age 2 gets, like Kirkwall looks better than this. This looks a lot better to me because instead of just having a bunch of gray with these buildings, we're breaking up that geometry. We're breaking it up by adding these big old statues. We even got smaller statues. We have a banner. We have foliage. We even have foliage growing on the walls. I'll be damned. A griffin. I gotta say, I love the hair in this game. Like, she's got that soul glow going on. Just let your soul glow. What? I'm ready. Are you kidding me? Why do our companions get the dopest shit? Lucanus gets some badass dark angel wings. Davrin gets a baby griffin. And then all our Rick gets is some goofy ass looking dagger. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Hook us up, please. There's something kind of exciting about it. All right, story time. Deep, deep beneath the planet's surface exist these huge titans and they would cause these gigantic earthquakes which would shape the world. Thousands of years in the past, they existed these Suedo elven gods, and one in particular, Mithal, decided to search deep in these mines and hunt and kill these titans. Elven god friends to go and start mining the blood of the titans, which we call lyrium. However, they decided to collapse all these tunnels because they discovered something, something dangerous that could possibly destroy the entire world. The dwarves are known to be the children of the titans, and the titans can have a connection and communicate with these dwarves when they choose to. And since we see Harding here with these blue highlights, which symbolizes the blood of the titans flowing through her, and then now she has these magic powers. Now, what I'm really curious about is, did they just select her randomly because she's some special snowflake? Or is this happening to many dwarves throughout Thetis? Now that would be super interesting. <laughs> now, now I'm really hoping we get to visit one of the dwarven homelands so we can see <laughs> a bunch of dwarves starting to trip out because they can use magic. Let the fade this has got to be a callback or an inspiration from the last boss in Mass Effect 2. You and me, Rook. Maybe that's what scares me. Ayo. I read somewhere that Velgard is going to have the most explicit sex scenes that it's ever had in the series. Now, Cyberpunk has the best sex scenes in any game I've ever played. So I wonder if Dragon Age will be able to top that. These are the times in which legends are born. <laughs> hey, Morgan, my baby mama is back. 
Now it's weird. She looks far younger than she did in Inquisition. This game takes place 10 years after Inquisition. However, Morgan looks younger than she did in Inquisition. That's strange. And she's looking a lot like her mother. She's wearing her mother's crown too. So I'm curious if maybe Captain Janeway, I mean, uh, Kate Mogru, if her voice will start taking over Morgan. That would be quite interesting. But man, one thing I gotta ask, why is she wearing a bra on her belly? Like, it just looks weird. <laughs> it's like, damn, they just don't want to show skin. That's the only reason I could think of. And when I look at all the other outfits, it's just, man, no one shows any skin. And that's male and female characters. Like, even male characters, none of them are showing, like, any forearms or biceps or anything like that. I think Harding <laughs> shows the most skin because she has her wrist revealed. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe in Tevinter, there's a law that you are just not allowed to show any skin. But hey, if you play on PC, you are in luck because Dragon Age typically has a huge modding community. So I imagine about a year after release, there'll be a ton of mods updating these outfits and whatnot. So it'll be all good. Or slain. Our gods are back. Our gods. How do we stand against that? I believe in all of us, so let's get it done. Diverin, bro, what are you wearing? <laughs> it's like, that thing is huge. It reminds me of old school World of Warcraft where they had them big ass shoulder pieces. It's like wearing that thing all around, his arm is gonna look like Quagmire as a, from Family Guy. Oh man. <laughs> the dragons look so dope in this game, man. Like, this silhouette is awesome. Like, damn, that looks so good. Ah, oh, I love that. It looks like a, a hornless behemoth. But then I guess I was like part of that short story in the uh, Tevinter Knights, um, the whole thing with regret. The dread wolf was kind of combining with a dragon. So then I guess why this wolf doesn't have any hair. <laughs> why it looks like a behemoth from uh, Final Fantasy. A hornless behemoth, hornless. But damn, it's got the little mohawk and everything. Our gods are back. There's two words that I think of when I watch this trailer is gray and brown. Our gods. That. I believe in all of us. So let's get Hey! Look at that. We got some red over here. Like this looks pretty good. Now this must be one of the finisher so moves that down. they're talking about. Basically, like when you build up your combo, then you get to use a finisher. Kind of like uh Batman. Hey, we got some warrior combat. But it looks weird, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, like if I dissect this, all right, look at his sword swing and look at the angle of his sword swing. Like his sword swing and angle is like that. But then the angle of this hit is down here, right? That's just wrong. And then on top of that, look how far away he is. It's like his foot, looking at his angle, his foot is here. The dude is all the way over here. Like this is like, two yards like two yards distance why is he so far back it's like it could be the angle playing tricks on us but that does look really strange see there again like his shield doesn't even come close to making contact because when it doesn't look like he extends his arm enough his shoulders are here his arm doesn't seem that extended it looks like it's doing something like that the shield like the shield angle like, it's not tilted that much. So it's like, if there's any contact, the contact would be here, like at the tip of the shield. That looks weird. And then also considering like how far away we are again, it looks like we're two yards. Like his pivot foot is here. Like his back foot is off screen. Uh, his demon or void thing, whatever it is. I like guess, yeah, it doesn't have any feet or anything, but I would say it's center is about here. So it's like, yeah, again, we're about two yards away maybe even more 
like maybe even three yards like we're just so far away it looks weird like that just doesn't look very good to me at all whoa <laughs> but did you hear that whoa <laughs> damn all right now the audio is legit shout out to the audio team because that sounded fantastic okay now this is weird i have no idea what's going on here like this makes me think it's symbolizing red lyrium and blue lyrium and like we were talking about earlier if the titans are awake then what maybe the titans are controlling these dragons <laughs> Dope. October 31st, Halloween. This trailer, I think, depending on who you will talk to, some will say it's a lot better than the previous trailer. Some might even say that the previous trailer was better than this because I would say from an artistic standpoint, the first trailer was better because it told a story and all of the, the scenes flowed together perfectly. However, in this one, it feels more like a mashup. Now, now this is purely my speculation, of course, but I suspect that this trailer was like, all right, guys, let's go grab all of our dark scenes and mash it together and be like, see, Dragon Age fans, Dragon Age is still dark, don't worry. I personally believe that the first trailer was more of an honest representation of what we're going to get in Velgard. Is the art that they showed in the first trailer was a lot better. Now this, except this, this is awesome. Like, I love this a lot. Now, the one thing I keep noticing when I look at all these big set pieces is gray and brown. It's gray and brown. It's gray and brown. It's gray and brown. It's gray and brown. Or sometimes we have scenes like this where it's still gray and brown. However, they're relying on a big lighting source to add the color, which we see here in the eyes. Oh, and I didn't even touch on this, but it looks like we're going underwater for the first time in Dragon Age like that. It's dope. I'm really excited about that. However, like when we look at the first trailer, the one that received all the criticism, like this feels like an environment with history, story, like this alleyway, like there's so much more detail here. It's crazy. And then this scene, especially like this environment looks beautiful. Like there's so much life here. Like there's all these people, objects, like so much story. And then even here, but it's like, yeah, there's gray and brown, but then there's also gold trimming. Then we have all this foliage growing over overgrowth. Like it looks fantastic. The trailers and all that is dictated by the marketing team. And then sometimes the marketing team has its in-house creatives or they will outsource it. And what happens in that process is that marketing will have a general idea, but then they'll need a team to help them storyboard out what it's going to look like. Then they'll determine hey, what environments they're going to use, what NPCs they're going to use, of course, the main characters that they're going to use. Then the developers know what are the key pieces that people are going to see. So for example, they'll know that the camera is going to be super low to the ground at this angle. So then, for example, the environment team will come into this environment and then make sure that this looks hella good. Thank you so much for watching, especially you that made it all the way to the end. Please let me know in the comments. Did you like this trailer better or did you like the previous trailer better? And which companion you're looking forward to the most?